Welcome, my friends. This is about the message that we've been receiving. My perspective and what I found in my book. So there are several clients that have been asked what the experience is with what ETs are showing them. So what I see here, um, the names have been changed to protect the innocent. So person X says, I was shown downloads of a destruction and death. Mind you, when ETs show us these, these are probable timelines of where things can go if things go sideways <clears throat> or parallel worlds. It has to do with the sum of resonance of the creation of timeline goals. Why? Another person claims we are on a path to extinction and we're causing genocide for species on our planet. And they say, the ETs, they will not let our planet die. It's very deep. Another person said, I was shown that humankind is at the precipice due to poor choices and must change, especially embracing a deeper spirituality and respect for all life. Um, another person says, the ET is basically saying, we're here to help because you are in dire straits where you're going. And um, before I go further into what else was changed um, is the counseling and guidance is what I'm getting is the creator God of gods before Ra was Atum and Atum in Greek is Atom. So the word Atom is described in the correct translation, that which cannot be divided. Okay, so we are being warned in ancient text that the atom is which cannot be divided. We have a presence of ETs physically since 1947, the Roswell crash, but it's more to, we got to look at the sequence of atomic bombs and atomic testing. So this is for the atomic pros out there in the sciences what they don't understand this is what was explained to me <clears throat> by the actorian council um this goes past my personal needs and wishes this is for the human race and they say that we appear when you use energy to destroy same goes for the large hadron collider you cannot believe that when you smash particles you'll find actually a formula. It's like wrecking, I don't know, a Toyota 4Runner and, and, and a Testarossa at full speed, smashing them together, exploding them, and then from the debris, trying to figure out who the manufacturer is. <clears throat> I think in my mind, that's illogical, that's implausible. I think it's impossible. But they are either people are possessed or ego-driven think that this is the way. So basically, in my mind, what the uh, Large Hadron Collider produces is density, lower density, lower dimensional gateways and three dimensional matter. This is what I was told. And this is not positive for Earth. And it's basically as, as Earth is ascending, it's kind of like throwing a monkey wrench or like a balancing wheel to a system that's already fine. So it makes us, uh, us still topple. We're still not going the divine path. And they wish for us to realize that and stop and channel alternative energies and end the suppression of the free alternative energies that are, that we already have, that are already uh, all out, or energy efficient devices, if you will. So I think in 1984, um, the um, <clears throat> interdimensional brotherhood, our forefathers, we are their offspring, demonstrated the power they have, but we must realize. So they flew over a missile silo with uh, a dozen rockets, all with nuclear warheads, and they shut the system off. And the military got very scared. 
to, to show what they're capable of and they know where everything is they know where everything is every, every detailed plan everything every secret from whatever government structures you want to keep the interdimensional uh, royal class of ets whether the syrians pleiadians all of those that are concerned about the well-being and the continuation of the planetary advance for civilization are concerned about us for that matter because we are we, we, we shot a rocket to the moon i don't know if it was nuclear and implode imploded it on the surface just to hear if the thing is hollow and it, um, supposedly the moon rang for like weeks after the explosion well, if you're an extraterrestrial race, and let's say you have um, uh, bases at the back of the moon and you, you see a, a projectile coming and it explodes on the ground, that's an act of aggression. We think it's research. They think we're a little bit of out of control. Somebody said something very funny. He said, imagine you land with a spaceship in an in a, in a, in a, insane asylum where everybody has Uzis pointing at you. That's how they feel. They came here, they tried to talk to our political leaders, they tried to convince, advance. It's an ongoing story that we still have to heal. They tried in Atlantis to advance and heal and always misuse corruption, ego coming in, possessions, low dimensional entities, archonic behavior, and it goes sideways. Atlantis sinks, Lemuria disappeared, you know, Rome fell. Um, Germany fell always these cycled wars where nobody wins there's casualties and then somebody puts the flag on a mountain and says that's my piece of land and that corruption is planted is spilled upon and we have to realize that we have to come to terms to end it to stop it to realize in telepathic union that this is no longer necessary for conscious advancement so they're concerned there was a second case I heard, and quote me, right or correct me if you will, it must have been on Gaia or Ancient Aliens where one operative or whistleblower reported that a craft appeared in Russia and they turned on the nuclear countdown for the missiles, counting down. And everybody got scared shitless. The, the ignition keys were not in the ignition to turn on these systems. These are also independent systems. They can't be hacked. You can't, uh, you know, get at them. They are, they are independent electric circuitry underground, all protected. But yet a craft appeared, turned the count on on. Everybody was like, we're done. This is it. And when it reached zero, they shut everything off just to show us you are not in power here and you're playing with toys that are out of control. So let me explain what splitting an atom means. Splitting an ap atom is exploding a miniature planet version, a fractal of what planets are or a sun. And when the thing explodes, you use that level of explosion to turn that into energy. And the destroyed path from that molecule that you have destroyed is the unlight, which is the negative side of photons, which when you have plutonium in your pockets in four, four to eight weeks, you lose your teeth, your hair, you fall apart, you deteriorate and your entire body falls apart. Uh, the entire molecular structure of this wholeness and oneness falls apart. And we're not learning that this is destructive energy that we're producing. And then we use the heating core elements the the depleted diploni uh, uh, diplonium, the depleted plutonium and and uranium and i don't know all the technical terms and then we put it in the ground in salt mines where oil basins are groundwater riverbeds flow and we have the nuclear waste in the inner earth it's not removed or off the planet it's we have um the decay rate of a depleted uranium um, core can be 50 to 100,000 years. See, like Chernobyl, half of Europe was uh, affected by that explosion, which le leaves devastation and nothing but destruction. But yet we have people in the atomic industry, uh, they're not willing to see that you're using a destructive force where the Egyptian or the ancients advised against that atom or atom, which cannot be divided. Yeah, this is not, we're not here to split atoms. This is not a divine formula. E M C square is not a divine formula to get energy. I was told, and maybe in a hundred years we'll find that, this is sometimes where we 
experiences are stuck that <clears throat> we think that when we find the nuclear reservoir of an atom and we learn to get in resonance without destroying it, we'll have energy till kingdom come. No problem. And we can build energy cells that can be this size, that can run an entire neighborhood. So for any science or scientist, I don't know what that means. There is a nuclear reservoir in the atom that must be adjacent to what we call zero field. And when you have that, you kind of also work outside of time and you're leaning on a river of a mass amount of energy. I mean, they say the energy of an orange in a black hole can be, I don't know, 50 times the sun, as in the nuclear power. And we know how to lean on that. You know, like going to the river, putting your, your, your mill or your wheel in and harnessing the energy from the river when we know where it is without damming. You know, like dam, when somebody says, God damn, where, where damming is we're blocking energy. And when we have created rivers in our inland structure that went linear, what happens every now and then? Floods, because rivers flow curvy. So we have altered nature. We have denatured ourselves, moved away, isolated, built buildings that don't let the Schumann resonance frequency anymore. Uh, our sanctuaries became dwellings and it's like slave trade all over again. And we want to leave that cycle. And that's what they're telling us, that we have to break that, get out of that, and get into the intelligence of understanding what we're doing to one another with destructive behavior. So therefore, the High Council is not for atomic weaponry on this planet, or nor energy. We have enough solar power to run cities, but yet we have nuclear power plants. We had, uh, I think, Fukushima, and we're, st we're still running this. We're, we're not in control here. When this goes out of control, we have no control over the spread. No control. And it defragments the DNA. It decalibrates dimensional uh, 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 connections. The tests they did in Nevada when they blew up atomic bombs, you rip tears in the time continuum when you do that. And a lot of those super sciences uh, they're so three-dimensional, they don't understand. Their they're fourth and fifth dimensional fabric gets dented every time you ignite that. One more tale, which also must show you or bring you the conclusion of, of what that is, is uh, they shoot a rocket off with a nuclear warhead. I think the plan was to shoot it direction to the moon and it imploded. The rocket takes off, craft appears, zaps the, the rocket, dismantles the warhead, Rocket explodes, warhead plunges to earth, doesn't explode, has to be secured. The high councils of extraterrestrial races are not allowing us to expand interstellar with nuclear power. That's where we, that's where we not having free will here. And un understandably, we're out of control. And Elon Musk saying he's going to colonize Mars in five years. If you don't have the authority from the Galactic Council to rebuild, I don't believe you shoot people in, in the flesh in a rocket five years up there. And I don't even know how you're gonna go past the barrier, past Earth orbit. Also that's monitored. Also second is the timeline and the time sequence on this planet, what effect will that have on people? People have no idea. You think you just can put people in a tin can and use your starship to fly to Mars. Also, what I've seen that these NASA astronauts, like after a year, they have to return to Earth because their bone structure li liquefies. They don't really have artificial gravity. And I don't think that Elon Musk has the technology to override that. And some people down here will be humbled when what will appear will take place, which is what I strongly feel. I don't know what timeline that will be, but some, some event will, will take place because it can continue this way. For those that are listening, I'm preaching to the choir. Those who are in alignment, you don't have to worry about anything. We worry about those that are out of alignment and out of integrity and not really doing what they're here to do. So that this continues. Um, one person was shown that humankind uh, basically is at a pivotal point right now, you know? So, um, 
um, we've, we're being told that the human race on, on Earth is overpopulated and that two thirds of our population need to be removed. I don't think we overpopulated. I think we, we in certain areas we overcrowded and that, need, that needs adjustment and refinement. Uh, the overpopulation to me is a myth. Is I think there's a lot of mismanagement on Earth as in resourcing. There's no scarcity of anything. This is how we source it. Who has the power? Who has the gold mines? Who has the diamond mines? Who who prints their own money and doesn't contribute to the well-being of Earth? You know. Um, who owns or runs rockets in the Amazon jungle? You know, who refurbishes the the ocean soil with apparatuses that can reactivate the bottom of the Atlantic or the Pacific? Like I, we have technology. I have downloads of stuff. If I have support for people, I can build um, uh, systems that you can submerge that will bring the barrier reef in um, Australia back. But I've, my call has been out and nobody has showed up where we, we need somebody, a billionaire that has spiritual karma, karmic ideas and gets the message. It's not for us to get rich, it's for us to do the job. Then we get a freaking cargo ship and load thousands of crystalline uh, submersible cubes that will be then dropped strategically in the areas where biodynamically the barrier reef is suffering and bringing the ocean back. We have everything here to recalibrate and fix Earth, but we must make the choice to work together and share and set it up. And that's for, for that's for all of us. I've seen people in Haiti, you know, it's not for you to have a regular job, it's for you to clean the river up in Haiti. So there's companies now and young entrepreneurs coming, cleaning up the oceans, collecting the plastic, uh, reusing, recycling that, all of that stuff right now, it's time for us. We are the stewards of this planet, of this garden and Despite the fact that, that we have 30,000 years of slavery and Anunnaki and Draconian Elohim Adamite control, the children of Noah, Abrahamic religions, all of this distortion and transliteration, we need to find recalibration and come back to the center of what is the Ur as an Ur, original source of energy and sourcing that being in harmony with nature. And when people realize that they will leave the big cities because they leave too much tax, too much rent, crime rate too high. Why am I living here? Why am I having three jobs? And some people really have a very long fuse not realizing that you're in the puddle of this and it's time to get out. And the migration has already begun, whether people see it or not. I, mean, I think like Manhattan loses 100 renters a day. Um, so you'll see buildings will be empty. They have shown in China that they built these super billion dollar cities that are ghost towns. They are completely empty because they are livable, they're uneconomical, they're not made according to the human race and adjusted. Where I, where I think elliptic buildings, bubble domes, hempcrete, aircrete, um, mine is magicrete, which is crystalline and photonically enhanced aircrete, lighter building, less cost being more effective, being more economic. And that's also the download that I'm getting you know, from the ETs that how we're gonna fix this, you know. Um, we have observed that, that's what I was told, that you are destroying your planet, you're destroying one another. You have hatred and ignorance and the dis dis disregard for the sanctity of life and spirit. So those billionaires that sit in those high rise buildings and why don't you buy, I don't know, 14,000 acres of Amazon forest and kick petroleum companies out and say this, this ends here? Um, like some people also prevent pipelines going through where the ley lines are, where people connect with the Holy Spirit and the ancestors, the pipelines destroy the connection because you put, put a lead, lead pipe through, through the soil, a lot of stuff is being disconnected. So we have to find other modalities and systems to find free energy systems and devices and advise one another to be not in war. You go to the old Mesopotamian era or area, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, the conflict, Jerusalem, all of this, these are wars that are thousands of years old because of the disconnect of the telepathic connection that the human race has. And when that is reestablished, so I am told, we put out our arms. Armies will no longer serve whatever forces behind them. People will resign and people will go home. If we activate the right and just energy and frequency, which is what this planet needs, so we function correctly, peace naturally comes in and the falsities and the fakeness 
and the BS will cease because we're realizing we're only just doing it to ourselves and then this can go extinct. It's a very fragile subject for the Arcturians, they call a Earth Velatropa, to stabilize consciousness and enhance and help people expand is very fragile. You know, if the sun is off by a millimeter, you have an ice planet. So people don't even know how valuable and fragile human life is. It's very important. So the messages were all consistent with warnings about pollution, global warming, self-destruction, human wars, how humans treat one another, and other similar human behaviors. I was trying to find actually when they talked about this great revelation, and maybe I find it, I'm not so sure. Um, there was something, um, we all are one in one from one, just a different rate of development, understanding the time, spiritual growth and outreach is what initiates contact. So um, one says, I asked the leader what the true religion on earth is. And he seemed surprised that I asked him this. He replied that there is no true religion on earth. When I asked him for an explanation, he ended that question stating that he had probably said too much already. So we are segregated. We're not in oneness. Everybody believes their God is the ultimate God. It can't be that we have 470 religions that claim their God is the ultimate God because your God is not, Buddha is not Allah. Allah is not the most high. Um, the most high is not the supreme high royal. And, and so on and so on. The segregation, if you look at all religious aspects, we're all trying to say the same thing, but we have to learn to work together in that aspect, that this is all actually one belief system and a oneness. We're on one planet, but we're telling us it, it isn't so. But we, we have one air bubble that we're in and we're all breathing that here all together. We all bleed red so far. And that oneness must be understood and how do you say, put into the inner. One reported the teacher's voice told me to pick a flower, then tear a leaf in half. They said to look at the veins of the leaf and the white stuff that came out, that was the plant blood. They told me I was like the plant and the plant was like me, both alive knowing they were alive together. They told me to treat every creature like it was alive, like me. They wanted me to see the connection between all things and that we are all one. They also said to um, uh, contactees that there is a timeline where a great revelation takes place and where ships will pick delegates and make contact with um, humans physically. And I believe that's possible. And the ETs told me when your mystical state, as in your brain frequency, is stabilized to a degree where it's comfortable for you to meet us in a time dilution, we will make contact with you. And I think that's very valuable and that's very interesting. And it won't be the White House. It won't be in, in any football stadium or any, any commercial thing. It won't be where you at least expect it, but that it needs to be so um, the contact experience is not so disruptive to the human race. And I find that very interesting. Um, not everything is just like doom and gloom, let me see. Um, the disaster that they foretold that that'll happen, we're already in the middle of it. We're being, we're being shaken right now to look at it. It's not about masks. It's not about uh, vaccines. It's not about 5G. This is really a call where the soul is being asked in this time to renew their vow, the marriage to life. And we're being asked with all sincerity why are you on this earth? What's your purpose? What is your service? And what are you doing? Um, one person said, and that's, that's like my, my favorite, he says, there will be a full disclosure by seeing giant ship, ships in the sky worldwide, a major event causing great fear with the falling of uh, fiery rocks, but ending in totally a new earth, 2-0, with two suns, and oneness among all beings on this planet. A city coming down from the sky with golden sidewalks. So that might be a major ship that is built like a city 
I'll, and I'll do a, uh, do a book on how ships looked like temples. There was a, um, a movie called Riddick where they had to fight these people from the negative universe. They called the Necromanga and the, the ships that landed looked like temple structures landing on the planet. And that is channeled material coming back from the ancient times of the Vimanas. And then check in India, all the temple that uh, temple structures that are built as the dimensions go up with all the deities and devic structures on top of the temple is a Vimana, which is a ship. Uh, a Shem, I understand, according to Dan Winter, meanings building the altar in, in, in front of the Lord, like a face conjugate signal system that will connect with the oneness. But I believe a Vimana is a ship that can traverse dimensions where you can go from here, there or other places. There's a book that I ordered to investigate for those who are interested in that. Uh, it's called Vimana Shastra by an Indian scholar. And I listened to documentaries of many, many Indian scholars and not European scholars that claim to know Indian religion. The native people there and storytellers said, these are not mythological tales. These are documentations of what really took place when the gods lived with us, when they had cities in the firmament of the sky and when the gods fought one another. These are not fairy tales. These are documentaries that are thousands of years old. And we have scrolls that the Western civilization hasn't even seen yet that we keep sealed for when the time comes, those will be revealed. So one of the scholars, um, I don't know if he went into the palm leaf library of Madras, where your life is written on every leaf from birth till death. And those leaf, leaves change overnight when you make different decisions. Make the best decision, live your life to the fullest potential, so the leaf will change. And these priests know that, so they have these mummified and oil-dipped leaves, thousands of years old, that they sit in a room and these leaves can change. The writing, the text will rearrange itself. So that book, Vimana Shastra, explains very clear how the craft came from the sky, how they looked like temple structures. They're mostly golden. They had propeller systems. They had systems that we understand. And when we look at them with our technological understanding, we're like, oh, this is really, this is not mythological. This is a technical description of how it's built and what chemicals are used to get this system running. So another one, I was told it is important to have an offspring to continue my bloodline. That's what the ET said. ET contact is for us to breed out the wickedness, to begin our adventure in being closer to oneness of the grand picture of all life and everything that it represents and all love and all kindness. And when we have that, we will love one another. You know how many people know that um, they say, I have unconditional love for you. Yeah, and then an ET appears and says, I have a crush on you. All that unconditional love disappears. All the preconceived and um, domesticated training comes in and we no, we no longer have the capacity to give that on all levels and all trust because we are loving beings. We evaluate, we structure, we segregate because we learn that's how you survive. But the survival of the species and that's what the ETs told me and many, many others as we read from the book. As in statistically clear, overwhelmingly, they see a good outcome for us, but we will polarize, things will fall off, things will burn out, and there will be a split between the human race. Those who want to go fifth dimensional by integrating proper DNA codes and making divine choices so the aura can expand and the others will go the other route and that is their choice. So it's for us to realize what's free will and what is divine will. On that note, I'll see you with this message on the flip side. Peace.